This is Family Time 107, and we're talking about the greater good. This falls under the responsible decision-making social-emotional learning competency, and we're really winding down with our family time for this year. This is sort of our, our last regular family time discussion that we'll have this school year, and the last one I do every year is sort of just a a final lesson. It's just sort of thoughts on my mind specifically for my seniors. I'm very lucky that in the small school district in which I teach, I start getting my students in sixth grade. I'm the only visual arts teacher, so I teach six through 12 visual arts, and I work with middle school and high school athletes, so I really get about seven years with a lot of my students if they're in our program all the way through. So the last family time is always just a little bit of me reminding them of some things that I want them to know before they head out into the world. So this is kind of our, our last discussion and I wanted to end with just the idea of the greater good. And I really just have several questions we're going to discuss in class this week. One being, what is the greater good? And it could be defined a lot of different ways. For me, it's just the idea of doing something, being committed to something that is bigger than ourselves. And trying to do right by others, trying to elevate others, even when that's a difficult thing to do, maybe even when it's not what would be the most, I say the most beneficial for us, but I think when we help other people, when we elevate other people, when we inspire other people, we get a lot out of that. I think that is ultimately what is best for us, is to be built for others. But sometimes in the moment, it might not seem like that. And that's what we're going to kind of talk about. I, I want to discuss the potential drawbacks of placing blame on other people or situations. It's an easy thing for us to do, to look at the things outside of our control and place blame there, because then we don't have to take responsibility for it. And there are going to be situations in life where someone does something to us that's not really fair, or the situation doesn't really provide us with a lot of opportunities. I see that all the time with my students. I have a lot of students who have difficult situations at home, who have had a tough break, who haven't been dealt a real great hand. It's okay to recognize that and acknowledge that, but too often we fall into the trap of letting that become an excuse where we think that we're not able to overcome it. That's tragic to me when I see my students who have had a difficult situation and they don't believe they're able to overcome that. That gets to the issue of us having to try to build some self-efficacy, that they know they're capable of more, that they can learn and adapt and they can overcome challenges. And the risk of us placing the blame on other people or other situations is we don't have control over those things. It's important for us to recognize the things we can control and the things we're not able to control. And to be able to let go of some of those things we really don't have control over. On the flip side of that, I want us to discuss the potential benefits of taking responsibility for our actions. That's what we can really control. We can control ourselves. We're not able to control other people. We're not able to control the situation. We can, at times, influence both, and that's something we talk about frequently. But we don't have total control over those things. We have to control what we can control. We have to take responsibility for our own actions. A little saying that I like, it's not mine, I, I picked it up from 
the video years ago, but it was 100-0, 100% responsibility, zero excuses. That's a tough thing, especially when we do have situations in our lives, people in our lives that, that can make things difficult. But we don't gain a lot by, by letting that become an excuse, by letting that be something that holds us back. We have to take responsibility for our actions. And I think there's great power in taking responsibility for things that we maybe aren't even responsible for. And saying, okay, if this is a difficult situation, I'm going to take total responsibility for my part in all of it. I'm going to take responsibility for my actions and then I'm going to move forward. I'm going to control those things. And that's how we are able to impact the greater good. The greater good requires sacrifice. And that's something we're going to discuss as well. First of all, is sacrifice necessary for success? I think it is. I think success is probably most impacted by sacrifice. That's how we find success. We decide what we really want in life. And then the next question we should be asking is, what do we have to give up to get that thing? Is it time? Is it money? Is it certain relationships? Is it other things we enjoy doing? We have to make sacrifices. There's only so much time. We only have so much energy. There's only so many directions we can be pulled. What do we really want? What are we willing to give up to get those things? That's essential to success as far as I'm concerned. And then I want us thinking about what are sacrifices that have to be made for the greater good? Because sometimes, as I mentioned before, we have to sacrifice a little of our own attention or a little of our own individual success sometimes for the greater good. A simple example that we see at high school level and younger is if we look at athletics. If you're on a basketball team, there are times where it does not serve the team for you to try to score every time you have the ball. Selfishly, we might want to score every time and build up our stats, but that could hurt the team. It may be better for the greater good, for the entire team, for the program, to pass the ball, to be a role player, to set the screen, to do those sorts of things that help everyone succeed. And though in the moment it may seem like we're sacrificing what's best for ourselves, or it may seem like we're sacrificing the rewards that we want. We may be limiting our own statistics. I think we really get something back from that because the high tide raises all ships. When, when the team is good, the program is good, we have increased opportunities for success. And we, we get a lot of really important things out of that experience. It feeds back into us. And when my students leave my classroom, especially the seniors who graduate, I want them to be, I want that to be something they consider. When they're going into the workforce or going into their post-secondary education and thinking about what they want to do with their lives, we can be people who are built for others, who contribute to the greater good, who are doing something, who are learning and growing and working in a field that empowers others. I think we find a great deal of success. We find a great deal of satisfaction in our lives. And when we lose sight of the greater good, and the greater good, we don't need to think on a on an entire global level, we certainly can, but we can do it in small ways, in our communities, in our schools, in our families. That's the most important place to start with the greater good is in our own families. We're parents, we have to sacrifice for our children. We have to sacrifice for our relationships. 
spend a little time thinking about the greater good this week, how we can contribute to it, and what it, what it means to all of us. Much love.